uh, good morning or whatever time of the day it is. Uh, I'm Michael Marshall, an Anglican bishop, and I'm meeting with my friend and my colleague in prayer, companion in prayer, on the journey of faith, um, sometimes referred to in, well, in Isaiah, referred to as the road less traveled. Um, and we've been meeting in the bubble, which uh, COVID has afforded us, along with a, um, uh, a third friend. Uh, and we've been once a week spending an hour in prayer, very early in the morning while it's still dark, uh, together. And then 6.30. 6.30 in the morning, yes indeed. Every and Saturday morning. Every Saturday morning. And that's followed by that's followed by a, a little simple breakfast together in which we share what the Lord's given to us in the silent prayer for one hour. Soon. I think what we experienced. Tell is, us a is, little bit about you first. We are, yeah. Uh, my name is Sunhan Choi. I'm also Anglican priest from South Korea. My journey, my background is, I started my Christian journey from Pentecostal, Evangelical, and Charismatic. I used to pray a lot in speaking in tongues. But now I'm exploring, along with uh, Dijon Michael, more contemplative prayer. And uh, I think that's why we, we decided to meet up once a week every Saturday morning, to sit on the presence of God one hour, and after that, a breakfast. What I experienced for the last five months in this process, especially as we have breakfast together and share what we have uh, received, certainly we experience you know, another person's uh, presence. You know, Jesus Christ, who uh, expands and added his portion into our table. Yes, so yes. So the whole yes. our conversation is enriched. And also we experience what it means to uh, gathering in Jesus' name, two or three gather together. Yes, indeed. I talked a moment, yes, thank you, uh, the journey we're on, because the prayer life and the journey of faith is a pilgrimage, a journey, as, uh, as John Robinson puts it, journeying into God. It's a long journey, a lifelong journey, and you never arrive at the finishing post. And Jesus picks that up, you remember, in John's Gospel, when he says to those very apprehensive disciples, he says, in my father's house are many rooms, it is in this translation, in the King James translation, it's many mansions, well it certainly isn't mansions, it's resting places, or caravensere, um, wayside resting places, a motel at the best, but it's something not as good as that. In my father's house are many resting places, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you, and when I would go, says Jesus, I will, t I will prepare a place where I'll take you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So what is Jesus saying here? He's actually saying in the Middle East, there was this way by which the dragoman, or the servant of the master, after the, early in the morning, after the night's sleep with the master, he would go on the road to the next staging post and get it ready for them. So, and then he would come back, as Jesus said, I will come again and take you to myself, come back and meet them halfway on the journey and take them to the next staging post. The next staging post, which is not the finishing post. So you see, um, I think in our prayer life and in our life journey of faith, we reach a certain point and then we find great joy in it and it seems we could settle down here. <laughs> but then that seems to fade because we become conscious that we're called to something further. Do you remember on the road to Emmaus, those two disciples said to Jesus, why don't you stay over with us tonight and, uh, and use our home as a resting place? And it says, Jesus made as though he would go further. You see, however far you go with Jesus, he always wants to go further because there's always much more. And that's where we are on the prayer journey. And uh, soon and I have felt that we need to take that seriously and not teach this staging post where we are mm. as the finishing post soon. Uh, yes, uh, I do believe 
we have written a uh, truth and I believe uh, there is a counterpart in nature which corresponds to the written truth. So as Michael mentions, there are many rooms and uh, resting places in my father's house. I think it uh, clearly expressed this there are many rooms, resting places in my father's house in our journey. It is a uh, Nautilus. I think this is inside of Nautilus. And then there are many rooms from the uh, beginning. When the Nautilus is born, it contains only four rooms. But as it grows, it creates new rooms and then you know as the nautilus grows it creates new rooms but new rooms is larger or deeper and longer than the previous rooms so the way it grows is when the Nautilus creates new rooms, which is larger and deeper and longer, it blocks, it seals the previous rooms uh, so that the Nautilus cannot go back to previous stage, but only goes uh, further. Press on, says this. Yeah, press. St. Paul says in Philippians, forgetting what lies behind, Yes, though it's been useful and all our training in faith and so on, liturgical practice, all other ways of praying, yes, they've been very useful, but get stuck with them and it'll die because the finishing post is further, further, further. And the wonderful thing is that Jesus is our traveling companion. He's the third person in this little uh, bubble we're in. Uh, and he wants to lead us on to the next stage in our, in our journey, spiritual journey. So it's a long journey in this faith and we mustn't get stuck in our, what we like to call our comfort zone. And so, uh, and there's no roadmaps by the way, Jesus doesn't give a roadmap to us, he gives us himself as our dragoman who's gone that little bit ahead to get the next stage of post ready for us and we must follow in faith. Forgetting what lies behind, I press forward to take hold of him who first took hold of me, says St. Paul. And that's what Father Suna and I are really experiencing, I think. Yes, I'd like to add more to what uh, uh, Michael has said. Uh, supposing uh, someone is in the staging post at uh, seven, as John says, chapter uh, 14, Jesus goes ahead of us. So he actually you know, prepares staging post room number eight. And once the room number eight is prepared, he comes back and invites us to come into room number eight, and chamber this is number. Where we are. This yes, is where we exactly. are. Exactly. Yeah. So those who are in chamber number seven, waiting for Christ Jesus reveals. And once we see ah, Christ is knocking the door, then we get up, we, we pick up our tent and then follow towards chamber number eight. But chamber number eight is larger than chamber number seven and deeper than chamber number seven. So our aim, our goal is always put our heart and throw our net into the deeper, yes. deeper water yes. of the truth and journey. Yes, remember C.S. Lewis says um, uh, he's not interested in high church or low church, he wants deep church. And then again and again, it's only by being radical, neither liberal nor conservative, none of these boxes we tend to put people in or create tribalism in our various parties in the church no no it's deep church and it's only when you are radical and go to the depths and roots like a tree do your roots 
go as deep as your branches can go out. And I love that moment on the Mount of Transfiguration, remember. Peter wanted to stay there. Let us build three tabernacles, cosy rooms, hotels where we can stay. And this is so lovely. No. No. It is good, Lord, that we would love to remain here, dear Lord. But we must not remain. Since thou bidst us leave the mount, come with us to the plain. Then what we've experienced inwardly, we go out to express in the love of our neighbour and service of others. So this radical pursuit is so important both for the church and for us as individual Christians to share this wonderful journey with our dragoman, our servant, because I am among you as many who serve, says Jesus. Is it amazing that he puts himself in that, in that position? He literally is in our shoes. Um, you want to add anything? Oh, yes, uh, because the way Jesus Christ, who has already prepared a new room, and his great desire is he wants us to be there, to be with him. So this great, uh, there are many rooms in my father's house. And also Jesus says, as I'm in the father, Father is in me, uh, therefore, in us there are many rooms because we are the temple of God and God dwells in us. So that this continuous expanding and deepening our spiritual journey is our goal. And as we go along, expanding, experiencing, deepening, we can see full spectrum of the kingdom of God and depth and power and its purity. And then possibly we, uh, next talk, we'll talk about the another example, which is in nature. Yes. Hermit uh, crab. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll finish, shall we, the way you and I always finish our silent prayer hour by simply saying together, the grace of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the love, love of God, God, and the Christ. shared life of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia.